seashores and wooden lands of the north, it's a story of copper mines and iron ore, the Great Lakes fishery. To the farmlands of the southern counties, we'll look around, my friend, and all that waste the sportsmen in the state of Michigan. And sometimes when the moon brings out the diamonds in the snow, and the stillness of the forest lies encased in Arctic cold, the wind might whisper through the trees, listen if you can, it tells you of the beauty in the state of Michigan. Hi there, come on in. This is the week of Public Television's Spring Fundraising Festival. We have 90 minutes of Michigan Outdoors this evening. This program, plus our annual Fish and Wild Game cook-off. Now, in the next half hour, you're going to see a very special event, the opening of our brand new Michigan Outdoors TV Museum last weekend in Bath. This 4,500 square foot museum is now the home of our Michigan Outdoors cabin. That's where I am right now. You can come and see where this show is taped. We'll also visit with wildlife artist Dave Bowman, who painted our Michigan Outdoors Public TV Wildlife Art Print of the Year. This and more coming up, so you stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost. It's Thursday night. Time for Michigan Outdoors. renovation that began a month ago on Dodge City Restaurant finally got far enough along to where we could move in our TV studio, a whole array of fish and game mounts, and open the doors to our new Michigan Outdoors TV Museum. Our opening weekend guest wildlife artist was Chuck Denault, master of whitetail deer paintings, and a lot of people poured over his prints and originals that were on display. We have a large stock of hunting and fishing books, and while we don't normally clown around much at the museum, Winky the Clown joined us for the grand opening. She greeted the kids as they began their tours of what will become a unique hunting and fishing museum. Not of artifacts and historical objects, but my idea of a museum is to be an educational experience filled with contemporary mounts, dioramas, and equipment that is used by hunters and fishermen today. Just as Michigan Outdoors is an educational program on public TV, our Michigan Outdoors TV Museum will be an educational tour that will show the world of the outdoors through the eyes of hunters and anglers. We've already acquired some unique mounts, including Jose, a pet whitetail buck that died last year, and his 15 sets of antlers that he grew during his lifetime. You'll see the story of Jose and his collection of antlers next week on Michigan Outdoors. While the wildlife mounts are the first attractions we've put on display, we were fortunate that Jim Kane from Midland loaned us a life-size diorama of an ice angler getting ready to spear a pike. That was all hand-carved by Carl Christensen from the Upper Peninsula. Upland game birds, trophy fish, well, we're putting together quite a display that's growing every week. The museum is for people of all ages, but I suspect that active sportsmen will enjoy it the most. They'll learn a lot about pursuing fish and game in Michigan, how it's done, and see life-size mounts. Lightening up the day, Winky the Clown wanted fishing season to begin. You know, it's kind of early to go fishing because the ice is melting and you really can't get the boats out yet, right? Mm -hmm. But right. we're going to go fishing anyways. Oh, my. You're going to be had by a clown here in a second. This is Fred's first bluegill and oh, first sunfish of the season. <laughs> now you can tell everybody terrific. that you really can catch fish, That's Fred. Right. My you know, everybody so seems to have the impression that I could use help from time to time when I go fishing. Well, that's true. And they got in a fight over it. And people say clowns are goofy. I don't this think idea? so. This is the grand opening is now history, but new mounts and new exhibits are being added every day, and beginning with this TV show, we're using the Michigan Outdoors cabin that's a part of the museum tour. You know, we have a lot of great trophy mounts in the museum. We just picked some great big ones up today from Captain Emil Dean, and he's at the Port of Manistee. We're going to be adding a lot of trophy book information, too, in the recent issue of the Outdoor Digest magazine. We have a chart here, a map which shows the counties from which the four species of Michigan salmon have been taken. These are trophies since 1984. If we look over here at the trophy salmon counties, we find here that Manistee has the most entries of Chinook, the most entries of Coho, the most entries of uh, trophy size Atlantic salmon since 1984. This kind of data will be appearing in our museum. And right now, let's take a look at some of those big ones in our trophy book. <laughs> 
Here's a coho that didn't come from Manistee County. It was taken off Benzie County, the only trophy coho ever reported off this port. Zoanne Turner from Gron caught the 30-inch 13-pounder trolling a spoon in August at 9.30 in the morning. Meanwhile, off Manistee, Bill Albert from Jackson hooked into this nearly 20-pound coho. Unusually large for a coho, it was 34 inches long, got it trolling a Rapala at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, this big Chinook was caught in Lake Huron. Now, quite a few trophies have been taken in this great lake in recent years. Bill Walker from Royal Oak caught it on May 25th. Now, that is one huge salmon for the spring, 31 pounds. Imagine how big it would have been by fall. Back to Manistee, we have a 42-inch, 32-pound king that was taken at the end of July. Arlen Vanke from Onekama caught it trolling a northern king spoon at 6.45 p.m. Now here's a heavy beamed buck, 10 points with a 20 inch spread. Not only were the antlers heavy, but this buck dressed out at 200 pounds. It came from Cass County. Bow hunter Doug Hauser from Cassopolis took it on November 8th at 6 p.m. Craig West from Three Rivers was hunting one county to the east, St. Joseph County. It was the third day of the gun season. His buck had a 21 inch spread, but look at the extra points around the burrs. Five one-inch tines jutting out makes this 10-point a 15-point, a great trophy for Craig. And for those lucky hunters who got their turkey permits in the mail this week, listen to the story of Timothy Ard from Belleville. He was hunting Washtenaw County at the break of dawn on April 25th. Well, it was the uh, third morning, and I'd been calling to another turkey for uh, probably about 45 minutes, and uh, I was just about ready to get up and move, and I heard this guy gobble off to my right. I saw him come around the corner, and uh, I got my gun up, and when I moved, he saw me. And he turned and ran right at me and put his head down and felt kind of lucky I shot him at that point. Uh, didn't know what he'd have done if he'd have got up there and found out I wasn't a hen. Oh, yeah. That, that would have been real interesting. Yeah, it would have been. Huh. But uh, this is my first one, and uh, I like turkey hunting an awful lot. Tim Ard is not only happy with his turkey, I'm sure he's also happy with the honor of being our Michigan Outdoors Trophy Turkey Hunter of the Week. Now this weekend at our Michigan Outdoors TV Museum, we'll have all the exhibits we had last weekend, plus some new mounts that came in this week. Tim Hayes will be doing taxidermy demonstrations on Saturday. Always interesting to watch. And our guest artist will be Dave Bowman, the creator of the Michigan Outdoors Public TV Print of the Year this year. He's also done numerous covers for the Outdoor Digest magazine and painted Midnight Vigil, the first of our PBS White-Tailed Deer art print series, which we offered in 1988. Dave Bowman is an interesting guy. He's a taxidermist, an artist, a sculptor. He'll be talking about these things at the museum. And if you have an art print of his, that isn't framed, bring it down to the museum, meet Dave, and have him remark it. He'll do that for a nominal fee, put a little personal touch at the bottom of the picture. Now, this painting that we're offering during the uh, uh, fundraising special here was painted by Dave Bowman. It's a pair of loons. Dave is going to tell us about loons, and if you haven't seen loons before, maybe you recognize their eerie call. <laughs> We're fortunate here in the Great Lakes because there are an abundance of loons here. Um, I guess one of the things I, I have to say about loons is, is that they continue to move northward as civilization moves northward. Whether they're telling us, uh, you know, not to encroach on their civilization or what, but I find that, um, you know, right around Houghton Lake, as a matter of fact, there's several lakes there that, that contain loons, nesting loons. Um, one of the things about this painting people have asked me is that why is one riding higher in the water than the other one? Well, loons have the capabilities of compressing their feathers mm -hmm. and eliminating the air out of the feathers. There's air in between air pockets and that will submerge them into the water. Uh, sometimes that's done for an aggressive pose. Uh, sometimes it's done as a mating pose, um, you know, depending on, on, on what they want to do. Well, I know when you're taking pictures of them or encounter them in the wilderness from a boat, they'll oftentimes compress their feathers like that and sink down, and sometimes just their head is going across mm -hmm. the water like a periscope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. These loons in particular I found up in a, 
I shouldn't say these particular ones. I do several sketches for my paintings, but the inspiration, the seed was planted from a camping trip my buddy and I took way up into northern Ontario. And we camped out at this green lake and um, they swam by us in the morning and, and you know, gave off their characteristic calls. And um, Yeah, with that characteristic call, if you people who first hear it mm -hmm. freak out. Yeah. But after you hear that, you, you want to hear that as a oh, part of the wilderness. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, to me, that's uh, the equivalent of a wolf uh, cry, you know, the two things probably. Um, Tawas Bay was always a place where I would go. I'd always experience loons there. You know, they're great fishermen. I mm -hmm. mean, these, these things can dive. Uh, they've been caught in fishermen's nets up to 200 feet deep. So they, they can dive uh, to extreme depths to, to catch fish. And but, that, uh, that's primarily what they eat, and they swim mm -hmm. all. They need, uh, well, their legs are huge in proportion to their bodies because of the swimming. That, mm -hmm. That's the necessity for them is to swim underwater. They can maneuver underwater as well as a fish, really, literally, because of the design. It's the, the design of their bills and, uh, and the shape of their bodies are almost like a little torpedo. I mean, they can go a long ways underwater. Mm -hmm, absolutely. It's been found recently uh, that they actually have found some loons migrate to Florida into the Gulf waters and that mm -hmm. down in Florida bays um, which was kind of an interesting thought which but, one is the female well the back one would be the female in this painting and yeah. why so uh, why no real reason for me I guess uh, but I mean how could you know how can you tell the difference that will there's really not any characteristic difference uh, you know feather patterns in that are, are almost the same identical patterns um, but you just slight body size differences is, is you know is a little bit that's a little change in them. The female that's would it. tend to follow the male. Um, well, that's a good question. Or I, you I just imagine. decided that See, that's a female. When, well when they're nesting. That's just the way I compose a painting mm -hmm. actually. But when they're nesting, they'll take turns at the nest, mm -hmm. and uh, you know they'll they'll each guard the nest. Uh, males characteristically are guarding the nest. That's you know it's a real common thing, but. Uh, so here we have the, the morning setting, mm -hmm. sun coming through the trees. This was a, a watercolor? Correct, a uh, watercolor and acrylic combination. I, I, hmm. I started out with a watercolor and I worked my acrylics over the top of that. And was the but, morning really that pink? Uh, I probably had lived the color somewhat. I, I tend to like using these colors quite a bit. Um, you know, that, that uh, time when I was up in Canada, Mount St. Helens had erupted, and the interesting thing was is the atmosphere was a different mm. color. And I guess in, from an artistic standpoint, that stood out in my mind, and I think that's probably mm. one of the reasons I used these colors, too. Now this, so. right here, no signed and numbered, this is the original. Correct, yeah, this, this is the original. It looks here. incredibly yeah. like the print. Oftentimes, I'm, an original is different from the yeah, print. Yeah, I'm really satisfied with the reproduction on the prints. They they turned out gorgeous. You know, they really did. Mm -hmm. it. In some ways, there's certain little nuances about the print that's even better than the original. But uh, like what? I just love it. I think the white in the water has a little bit more intensity. Just some, pops some out. Of, I noticed that some too. Some of the sparkles in the water. The sparkles look better on the, the print. print. You know come out better so um yeah. but but the, this these rays of light are seen more now in my paintings because i mm -hmm. like the atmosphere you know you, you wake up in the morning and you see that mist and that that's something that i just enjoy dave bowman enjoyed painting it and i'm sure a lot of folks will enjoy having that print we've got a recipe called maple rabbit um, basically because the maple syrup is the main ingredient other than rabbit in here and you're going to um of course take your rabbit pieces and then just going to fry them mm. Boy, look, look at the meat that is on rabbit. Yeah, there really I mean, is. This is really a meaty rabbit. It isn't like, you know, the chicken you sometimes buy or, or get uh, the fried chicken that they right. sell that has little teeny just, nothing on the bones. Yeah, a lot of big bones and no meat. And just want to fry these and uh, no flour or anything else in this. No, just, just in, in oil? Right, exactly. And then you're going to um, put those in a casserole dish, put the rabbit in a casserole dish, and then make a sauce. It's got onions and a little bit of vinegar and some Worcestershire sauce. Very good, you did good on that. <laughs> I'm getting there. A little bit of chili pepper, or chili powder. Now this you could um, add more if you wanted to mm -hmm. add more or, or less, and salt and pepper. And then of course your maple syrup. And I thought that this would be too sweet for this recipe, but it really isn't. 
And um, then just make let this cook down a little bit and then put it over the rabbit. That all goes into a sauce. Right. Put it over the rabbit. And, and then bake just it. Bake it. Right. Of course, you just browned the rabbit and exactly. didn't, didn't cook it all the way through. Exactly. You know, we ought to try this out on our cameraman director, John Ford. He likes wild game. Let's see how he likes his rabbit. This is actually pretty good. Pretty doggone good. However you cook this, I'm not sure, Kath, but it, it flakes right off the, mm. off the bone. Yeah. Now, I've had to wrestle with rabbits before, trying to, <laughs> trying to free them up off the bone. <laughs> but uh, this is just about good enough to make me give up chicken. Yeah, it is. It's tender. It, it is extremely tender. The sauce is really, really good on this. Oh. When I heard, heard or saw the maple syrup in it, I thought it was going to overpower everything, but it doesn't. Oh, no. I, I suppose if you don't have maple syrup, good old Aunt Jemima. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Sure and you, you could. And you put some chili pepper in here? or what? There's a little bit of everything in here, actually. There's some onions. I'd like it even a little spicier. <laughs> would you? Spicier? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like yeah. spicy. A lot of people would like it this way, though, this mild. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. Very tasty. And you know, it's really so hard to describe what rabbit tastes like. Mm -hmm. oh, I mean, yes. it really not, doesn't, doesn't have a... It doesn't taste like pheasant, doesn't taste like chicken. But it doesn't mm -hmm. have a, a terribly distinctive, weird mm -hmm. flavor either. No. No, but it's, it's awesome. Awesome. This winter blast will be over soon. <laughs> we'll be into these spring activities. Get outdoors if you can. It's a great place to be. See you next week.